All right, today we're going to be looking at activity 3.3, continuing our study of argumentative writing. Our learning targets for the day, identify a writer's claim and explain the reasons presented for or against a topic. Write a claim stating a position or opinion about a topic, so we need to talk about what a claim is. In argumentative writing, the author's position is known as a claim. The claim functions like a thesis statement in explanatory writing. Identifying the author's claim helps you understand the author's opinion or point of view on a topic. Often, an author's claim appears in the opening paragraph. Sometimes the author states the claim in the middle of the text or even leaves it until the end. That doesn't usually happen. If you're putting an argument up, you want to usually do that at the beginning. To identify a writer's claim, look for a statement of position or opinion that reflects what the author is trying to say about a controversial topic. So they're saying something should or should not happen or uh, should be banned or should not be banned or should be put into effect or should be eliminated or should be, you know, there's all kinds of ways to, those different ways of saying. And notice that people are not going to say, I think, very often, especially you as a writer, are not going to use I statements or you statements, so it's first or second person. We want to state a third person. In this case, you're just going to state the claim when you're writing your own claims. Like, um, let's see what's one that could be. All diesel cars should be eliminated because they cause pollution would be an opinion that, uh, the, a claim that could be made. I'm not saying that's true or false, that's just not and the first thing that popped in my head. A uh, claim statement that is not a fact, that is not fact, a claim will be a statement that is not fact, so the author should provide reasons to support the claim. Okay, so that's something that can be disagreed upon. Nobody's going to state the claim that pollution is great. That's no, nobody's going to have that. That's not a controversial topic. Okay, so nobody would, you have to make sure that there is a for and against side for it to be a controversial topic. Uh, as you read the short article here, Don't Ban Peanuts at School But Teach About the Dangers, it says, Mark the text with an asterisk or highlight next to anything you agree with and an X next to anything you disagree with. So you could change colors. So red would be you don't agree with, and blue or yellow would be you, so you can change the color of your highlighter. Uh, circle unknown words and phrases. Try to determine the meanings of words using context clues. Okay, so read the argumentative essay here, and then there's some questions at the end. Number one, how is the point of, the, of view of that banning peanuts is unenforceable supported in the text? Go back to the text and, and support this statement with evidence. Number two, cite evidence in paragraphs one through five of the text that shows the editorial writer understands the dangers of peanuts at school. Okay, so go back, paragraphs one through five, find that question. Number three, what is the meaning of the word exposed in the second sentence of paragraph six? Use context clues to help you determine the meaning. Number four, cite examples in the text that show an opinion about banning peanuts in school. Okay. Uh, number five, which is the best example of a claim? So you put the check mark next to the one that's the best. Number six, paraphrase the claim in this editorial. Number seven, explain why you agree or disagree with the claim. Then share your position with one or more of classmates. Practice speaking clearly and refer to evidence from the text to support your position. We'll probably do that in small group activities. Uh, number the next one, check your back at your reasons for the, the writer presents to support the claim. Which reason do you feel best supports the writer's claim? Why do you think so? Okay, so that's article number one. The second short article. Uh, it's going to have a for and against. So you're going to identify all of the four F of uh, one color for the reasons for keeping the penny and A for all the reasons against keeping the penny. So either write F or A in the, uh, you can put that in the my notes section or you can highlight different colors, one for each. Uh, circle unknown, unknown, un unknown words and phrases like always. Okay, so the article is about pennies. So go ahead and read the article. And then we're on number nine. What support does the author provide for the idea that eliminating the penny is not likely going to happen? Cite evidence in the text. Number 10. What is the author's purpose, including paragraph 6? So go back and reread paragraph 6, and what is that purpose for having it there? Number 11. In terms of presenting an argument and making a claim, how does this article differ from the editorial on peanuts in school? Okay, so how, is, how are the two articles different? If you could turn this news article into an argument like an editorial, what position would you choose? Would you be for or against keeping the penny. Okay, so four, keep, so choose a side. Doesn't matter which one, just choose one. And then after you have chosen your side, 
paraphrase a part of the text that matches your, so if you choose the for side, provide evidence for your position, either way. Okay, so, and then 14, collaborate, and then write the claim for your editorial. So that's going to be something simple like, the penny should be banned, or the penny shouldn't be banned. Okay. Uh, we already talked about this earlier, the claims are debatable. <clears throat> Air pollution is bad for the environment, not a debatable topic. We all know that it's bad. Uh, as I'm filming this, it is super smoky and garbagey outside. This is early on in the uh, middle of September here, so we remember those days. And so nobody's going to argue that it's good, the air pollution is good. But here's something that could be argued. At least 25% of the federal budget should be spent on limiting air pollution. So that is a controversial topic that's debatable because somebody might say that's too high, somebody might say that's not enough, we should be spending the money on this or that. Okay, that's why there's always arguments in government, because there's lots of debatable topics. Uh, and then the last one, quick write, briefly state a claim a writer could make to support the idea that pennies should no longer be produced. Tell if the claim is debatable or non-debatable and why. So come up with a claim about pennies that follow that and if it's debatable or non-debatable. <clears throat> 